Inside Mercer Basketball with Coach Bob Hoffman and your host, Rick Cameron. Brought to you by Wild Wing Cafe. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Wild Wing Cafe at the Shops at River Crossing in beautiful Macon, Georgia. Head Coach Bob Hoffman joining us now to talk Mercer Basketball. Coach, we just came off of a road swing. Uh, up in the mountains, so to speak, to uh, Cullowee in Greensboro. Last year when we went to Cullowee, we had four inches of snow. This year it turned into beach weather, 70 degrees. It was amazing. Uh, I think uh, all the people, we, all the shops we went into, they kept telling us, this is what, it's not normally like this. And we yeah. said, we know. Absolutely. We've experienced it <laughs> at a high level. And then uh, Greensboro, we, last year we had to stay an extra day because we played yeah. a Sunday game. So neither one of them we had to spend an extra night. Yeah which was a blessing. Well, we ended up uh, splitting that trip, uh, Coach, as far as uh, wins and losses, but uh, boy, do we have the lead most of the trip. We led for 30 minutes in the first game, led for 39 minutes in the second game, so we, we were right there at uh, getting two. Yeah, uh, the first against Greensboro, our guys came out with amazing energy. We were attacking the basket, looking for each other, uh, hitting some big shots, and then we kind of got into a a dry spell where we couldn't make shots in the second half um, and then we threw the ball away multiple times right at the end yep. against their pressure and still had chances to win the game but weren't able to pull it out uh, against a really good Greensboro team. They had two big threes in that game. Smith hit a big three and Baldwin yep. hit a big three that kind of gave them the opportunity to put, put themselves in a position to win. We still had, had a chance, uh, didn't really get a good shot off. Uh, I was talking to somebody earlier today, and you know, they were saying that we're two and six in the last possession games yep. on the year. Mm -hmm. But if you throw the LaSalle game in there too, which was multiple yeah. Yeah. <laughs> late sure. games, yeah. it could be two and seven. So uh, it was a tough, tough game. But I, the thing you've got to keep believing in and keep being excited about if you're a coach or you're a fan. Uh, about how these guys continue to step back out on the floor and be energized and fight through adversity and through tough, tough games. Uh, we lost a heartbreaker right before the Greensboro game. Yeah. yeah. And then, then we go and lose another one at two points. So uh, that's encouraging for me because they're still fighting. They still believe we can do something significant. We haven't done it yet, but the season's not over. Well, one indication, Coach, of how they battled in that game, they were down eight at the 16-minute mark and then had a nine-point lead with six minutes to go. So they, it, it seemed like multiple times this year we've had swings where we just shut down the other team for five, six minutes at a time. Yeah, we've had great, great runs. Uh, just hadn't had them at the right time. <laughs> they haven't come in the right time of the game, but um, basketball, as we all understand and know, is a game of runs. And, yeah. and you've got to be ready uh, when your moment comes and then you've got to finish properly. And that's what we've really struggled with. We haven't finished like we wanted to, but on Saturday against yep. Western Carolina, we did a great, J, great, great job of closing out because the last two times we've been there, we had gotten leads yep. the last two yep. years and we weren't able to finish it off as we were able to do on Saturday. So I was really thrilled for our guys and uh, Jordan had 10 assists. And, had multiple guys have big games. Jalen Stowe gave us great energy the first half. Thought the third three right before the buzzer was going to fall in for him. But those first two threes gave us some separation that we were able to hold on to the second half and finish the game. And when you go on the road, Coach, man, it is so important to play well the first half, kind of keep the crowd out of it. And you go to the dressing room with a 20-point lead, which we've not had, to my knowledge, all year at that point. Yeah, I, I didn't know what it felt like. I'd forgotten. It had been a while. Uh, and but you had the momentum. I, yeah, I, we, we finished the half, Yeah, which we hadn't the been doing. Two previous yeah. games, the last minute of the first half had been a challenge to yeah, us. Yeah, and we finished, and we did well. And those are the things you got to build upon, and uh, we're, we're excited about getting back out on the floor, and we'll talk about it, I know, uh, in the next segment or so about Citadel, our next home yeah. game. But, but those were great opportunities for us on the road. We split the road trip. In normal conditions or normal situations, you would be excited about splitting on the road, but uh, we've dug ourselves uh, a pretty big hole because of losing some games at home. Yeah. So now you got to win more than one on the road when you have two. You've got to find a way to sweep, and we weren't able to do that. But we're hopeful the next couple of weeks we can get 
a few sweeps. That would be big. We can now say we have defeated everyone in the Southern Conference since joining the league. Yeah, well, and we had, we had beaten Western Carolina before we got in the league. That's right. Uh, at, at a tournament, but we, we, they had gotten us the last four times, so it was good to get them that, one of our, that Saturday. One of our go-to guys has been Dimitri Rivers. We call him Meeks. We're going to go to campus and visit with Meeks when we come back with more Inside Mercer Basketball. Right. Introducing Droid DNA by HTC. It's not an upgrade to your phone, it's an upgrade to yourself. I have purchased uh, five Jeeps here at Five Star, and my sister-in-law from Florida actually came up and purchased a uh, Jeep here. The way you're treated, the uh, satisfaction, the service, just the overall good experience. And, you know, for me to come back that many times, speaks for itself. We're back on campus at Hawkins Arena as we continue with our player spotlights. Uh, this week, Dimitri Rivers is joining us, our junior guard from Latson, South Carolina. Dimitri, walk us back to a much younger Dimitri. Growing up, you were born in Charleston and uh, grew up there in Latson. What was it like growing up in South Carolina? Well, um, originally I stayed and grew up in Monk's Corner, South Carolina. Okay. Which is probably about 25 or so minutes away from Latin. Okay. And it's more in the country. I mean, didn't really do much. Um, rode bikes with my best friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. rode bikes a lot yeah. um, on the back trails. Uh, just played basketball outside, played outside football with some of the, the neighbors. But besides that, that's pretty much how, was, how I grew up in Moss Corner. And I stayed in Moss Corner up to my eighth grade year. Okay. Then after that, then I moved to, to Latson. Okay. And I was going to uh, Berkeley Elementary School, Berkeley Intermediate, Berkeley Middle. And then when I moved to Latson, I started going to Stratford High School. Stratford High School, where you became a two-time All-State player. Tell us about the experience at Stratford, what kind of school it was, how you enjoyed attending school there. Well, it was it was a great experience. Um, it was a little different from Berkeley. You know, I left Berkeley. I left all my friends. Oh. Yeah, so it was a new experience. Um, had to make a, a lot of new friends. Um, uh, the coach there he accepted me with with open arms. Yep. Um, gave me the confidence I needed to play, and you know. Just everything just started falling in place. All right, in the media guide on our roster, you're listed as Dimitri, but if you get on the team bus and around the gym, it's Meech. Uh, at what point did you acquire the nickname? <laughs> um, let me see. It was seventh grade, I believe. Okay. I was playing on a YBOA team called um, the North Charleston All Stars. Okay. And um, one of my former coaches, um, um, Coach Terrell, gave me gave me the nickname. Uh, Is it a play off your name? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Pretty much. Um, I was new. Uh, most of the guys on the team he had already knew. Yeah. And I was a new guy. He was still like trying to get to know my name, and you know, he just started calling me Meech, <laughs> and then everybody started calling me Meech, and that that name stuck with just you. stuck with me. Followed me through high school, and yep, now I'm there in college. You yep. All right, Meech. Uh, most of us can remember our 21st birthdays uh, for whatever <laughs> reason, and boy, what a 21st birthday you had earlier this year. 30 points that night. Uh, you were hitting shots outside, inside. What a great experience. Was that uh, one of your better nights of playing basketball? Yeah, that was definitely one of my better nights. Um, it was definitely a night to remember being, you know, a birthday night. Um, you know, your first objective is to try to win the game. Oh, absolutely. And then, and then second, you want to you want to have a good game while you win, yep. and then for all that to follow my birthday was was an enjoyable experience. But yeah, um, that game had a lot of shots falling for yeah. me. Um, teammates kept finding me on cuts and, and open shots, and just everything was falling. It and was, then it got kind of dangerous in the dressing room post game, I guess, in the celebration, huh? <laughs> <laughs> a little, little birthday singing, yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, uh, Dimitri, you had a great game that night. 
we've seen you hit shots outside. We've seen you drive this baseline and dump shots inside. Coach Hoffman sometimes says, you might not know how good you can really be. Is there still improvement in your game? Yes, sir. I still think there's a lot of, a lot of things I can improve on. Um, like, I definitely think ball handling, that's something I still need to work on. Still getting stronger, yeah. you know, things like that. Um, there's still other aspects of the game I still need to get better at. Um, just my knowledge of the game. Yeah. And you're also a soft-spoken guy, but Coach really likes you guys to communicate on the floor, correct? Yes, sir. You're still working on that? <laughs> still working on that, too. Still working on that, too. All right, let's say the Dimitri Rivers that came here from day one and is the person that's sitting here with me today. How have you changed, if at all? Um, a lot of things have stayed the same. Um, definitely within our system, uh, communicating more. I've definitely grown in that aspect. Um, my first year here, I probably said about two words, <laughs> about two words <laughs> all season. But now, I mean, as I got more comfortable and started to buy in to, to what Coach Hoffman wants us to do, and that's, that's definitely been a change. All right, you mentioned so, those early years riding the bicycle out in the country, and now as a college student, when you don't have to be on the court playing basketball, what do you enjoy doing? Um, I'd have to say drawing. Yeah. Drawing, yeah, drawing okay. uh, was something big. Uh, that I always grew up doing when I was younger. A lot of people don't know about me, but I'm pretty good. Draw uh, video games, 2K. Uh, cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, your major here at Mercer, and uh, when your basketball days are over, what do you hope to do with that degree that you'll get here? Um, um, my major is communication studies, okay. and I'm minoring in uh, media studies. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm not exactly sure exactly what I want to want to do in the future yet. All right. Involved in that. But. All right. Uh, we're, uh, we've had a very tough <clears throat> non-conference schedule that should have uh, gotten us better in a lot of areas uh, in your heart. And uh, how do you feel individually and as a team, this team is ready to battle the uh, opponents in the Southern Conference? I think we'll be ready. Um, you know, it's non-conference. We, we lost some tough ones. Um, and of course, uh, you, want win, you want to win every game. And sometimes it doesn't work out that way. But, you know, all these games are, are just to prepare us for for conference play, mm -hmm. I feel like. So we're still going to go out here and work hard and try to give it our all and try to win yeah. the rest of these games. But I definitely think we'll be ready when uh, conference play comes. I know it probably doesn't seem like you would ever get to the point where you're one of the old timers, but indeed you are <laughs> with a couple of these uh, seniors we've got over here. But how do you feel the chemistry of this team is coming together? We had a lot of guys uh, transfer in, some freshmen. As we move forward, Coach Hoffman really stresses the team unity, playing as one. Mm -hmm. How do you feel like uh, we are ready to play as one coming down the stretch? Um, it's definitely getting better and better. Um, you can see us still trying to gel now, but in the beginning of the season, you know, we're still, and, I, and like over the summer, it, it wasn't there yet. Mm -hmm. But I can see like every day and as games go and as practice goes, they're starting to get closer and, and like figuring each other out, yep. tendencies and and just how to play with each other. All right. Now, you had a great 21st birthday, scoring 30 points, great eating that night, but it will be okay with us Mercer fans. If you want to repeat that on anybody else's birthday the remainder of the year, you just feel free to light up that scoreboard once again. <laughs> Maybe I'll pretend every day is my birthday. There you go. Dimitri Rivers that visiting with us today. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back uh, with more of the Bob Hoffman show when we return to Wild Wing. As a business owner, you need to choose the financial direction that's best for you to find a clear path to growth and success. At bb and we support businesses of all sizes with personal service and advice, sharing the sound financial knowledge we've gained over more than 140 years so you can move ahead with confidence. Talk to us today about your business goals. bb and sharing knowledge for a brighter direction. For over 20 years, Mercer has relied on Forsyth Street Orthopedics. Their team of physicians keeps players on the court. Forsyth Street Orthopedics and Ortho Georgia have merged together into one practice, and we're stronger than ever with 26 physicians and five regional offices. As a graduate of Mercer and a partner of Ortho Georgia, we are proud to sponsor and take care of Mercer athletes. Ortho Georgia, getting better together. Go Bears! 
Well, we're back now at Wild Wing Cafe, talking more inside Mercer basketball. We just visited. Really food. good food here. You know, right? Absolutely, Coach. You want to talk about the food? Salad. Wild, wild chef salad. What's your favorite selection this week? Well, I like the you wild have chef multiple. salad. Okay. Okay, but that bacon, egg, and cheeseburger, uh, that's what the guys that are behind the cameras right now, that's one of their favorites. It is definitely mine also. All right. All right before no we... cholesterol in that. <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> before we talk about the making occupational medicine, look at the Southern Conference coach quickly, Dimitri Rivers, and how much he has developed since he's been yeah, with the program. He, Dimitri works really hard on his game, and our guys, have, uh, our assistants continue to work with him every day. Uh, you know, he's had some amazing moments as a Mercer Bear, and I think there's more to come. He's still getting stronger with the ball. We just need to get a little more consistent with his finish on threes and around the rim, and, uh, and Coach Mangle's working hard to beef him up. I know his mom and dad, when we were first recruiting him, that was the first things they were wanting to know, you know, what was it going to take for him to get a little stronger, and he's definitely worked yeah. on that part of his game. Well, I know you talk about athletes on other teams that are long and athletic, and Dimitri is long yeah, and athletic. Yeah, he's 6'8", shooting guard, and uh, we're thrilled he's part of our program. What an amazing young man. I mean, yeah. really, really good guy, yeah. and uh, he, he's excited about other success, but we're, we're thrilled he's part of our program. He's a yes, sir, and no, sir guy. Yeah, he is. All right, uh, Coach, let's take a look at the SOCON. We're at about the halfway point. The Citadel's actually played nine games. Others have played eight. Others have played seven. So by the time we go into the show next week, everybody will be over the uh, hump of halfway having played everybody once. As we take a look at the uh, standings, two teams with only one loss. Uh, that would be UNCG and Chattanooga, and then ETSU and Furman at five and two. Again, I give you credit. You identified that UNCG could be right there at this point in the year before the season yeah, started. Yeah, I wish they weren't because that means we would have beat them. Uh, <laughs> but I do think they, going into the season, I thought they had a really good team. And yep. then they showed up really well in the early season. Wes has done a great job with their program. They got people at each position. Alonzo's playing at a high level. Yep. Baldwin hit big shots like we talked about. Smith hit the other three on us the other night. And then the, the player of the year candidate, we didn't even talk about White, and he got in foul trouble. He did. Us. But uh, they're, they're playing really good. Uh, Chattanooga's got all those guys back. Uh, they seem, Greensboro and them seem really stable. And East Tennessee, I think, is the deepest team on, in, in our league. Yep. And they have the most players. Uh, and they played a lot of road games so far. I think the schedule will kind of flip back to them a little bit as we come to the end here, that yep. they're going to get some of those folks at their at their place as we finish. Well, as of our taping, UNCG has defeated Chattanooga and ETSU. Right. And I think at that point, they themselves really realized how good they could be in this league. Yeah, and, and they've had um, Sanford beat them at their place. Uh, they, they're still going to be uh, some crazy games and people are going to shake their heads at, I believe, as before the season's over. Uh, but halfway through, pretty impressive to only have one loss uh, when most people didn't expect yeah. you to be where they are, uh, speaking of Greensboro. Well, regardless of where you stand at this point and as we get closer and closer to tournament time, obviously it becomes more difficult for those teams who finish 7th, 8th, ninth, or 10th to have to play the extra day. So certainly, if nothing else, everybody wants to finish in the top six. Yeah, I think it helps you. I mean, there's been uh, teams that have gone and won more than three games and got Hardly to go to the tournament. just nearly ran the table. Yeah, and uh, I mean, you can look around the country and it's definitely happened, but it's not normal. Uh, it's really hard to do, yep. and you're, you you got to have a lot of depth to be able to make that happen. Uh, and it would be really hard for a pressing team, I believe, to make that happen, playing four days in a row or four out of five days and trying to make a swing like that. Um, but, uh, you know, mm. while we... For us, the most important thing is, no matter where we finish, we just got to keep getting better, and we yeah, got to keep yeah. working on the things that uh, really, the little nuances of the game, uh, the end of halves, the end of games, uh, passing when we need to pass, shoot when we need to shoot, and knowing when those things should occur and who should be taking them. And, and I think throughout, you look through down the, the conference schedule, and there's a lot of teams still trying to figure out some mm -hmm. of those things. Uh, but probably nobody has as many new players as we do yep. uh, trying to integrate them into what we're doing. And uh, from that standpoint, that's not a crutch or saying that's the reason we're at because, like we mentioned in the first segment, I mean, we're two and eight in one possession games, and those could have gone a lot of different ways. So 
Uh, I'm excited about how the season ends. I think our league's really good. A lot of great teams uh, in our league. I think the tournament will be fantastic. Another thing that, that I like, Coach, we uh, have played well in Hawkins Arena. We've got six of the last ten are at home. Yeah, we, we need those crowds. We've had, uh, we're either first or second in the league in attendance. A lot of people uh, have done a great job with that. We do need to finish well with that. Uh, it would be a, a great thing to find a way to get all six of those at home and win a few more on the road. Uh, that would be a great finish and tremendous momentum going into the tournament. All right, and the next four of those are going to be at home. That's sure what are. we're going to talk about next when we come back home with more cooking, baby. Inside Mercer Basketball. I have purchased uh, five Jeeps here at Five Star, and my sister-in-law from Florida actually came up and purchased a uh, Jeep here. The way you're treated, the uh, satisfaction, the service, just overall good experience. And, you know, for me to come back that many times speaks for itself. the game plan rush into the wild wing cafe and tackle one of our new steakhouse burgers 100 percent angus 100 percent great it's an all-star lineup that can win you tickets to the biggest games of the year where back with inside mercer basketball head coach bob hoffman coach uh, the citadel this weekend and then Monday we follow that up with Western Carolina. When it comes to the Citadel, you talk about scoring. They have led, I guess, from the beginning as the most uh, highly scoring team in the nation. And as we speak, they're still in. The, I haven't looked this week. So they are lead. first. They lead UCLA by one point at 94 and a half points a game. I know they're averaging 94. I think they're giving up 98 a game. Uh, they've had some crazy games, including a 125 to 101 game at Arizona State. Uh, multiple big games where they've hit threes yeah. out the wazoo. Uh, they're going to shoot a lot of threes. They have made, Coach, 270 this year. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, they're they're taking them, and you and and so you've got to play really good defense, yeah. and you've got to guard those guys, and then you got to take care of the ball because they're going to pressure you as soon as you get on the floor, multiple different ways. And uh, Coach Bauckham's done a great job wherever he's been of doing the thing nobody expects. So as he has a week this, a whole week yeah. to get prepared for us, we're going to try to be ready for the kitchen sink because I believe he'll try to throw it at us come Saturday. I think the worst nightmare of a top game would be what Walford got in with those guys, an overtime game, 104 to 103. That's not the game you want to get into with them. Yeah, I hope not, <laughs> unless we win. Unless we have one more point than them, that'd be all right. I mean, I, you're right. I mean, you got to control the tempo, but you've got to take advantage when they're pressing you and take the layups that they give you. Yeah. And we work really hard on trying to get two foot stops in the lane. Uh, we've worked on it off and on all year. We've played other pressing teams. For the most part, we've done pretty good against yeah. pressure, other than the end of the Greensboro game the other night. And uh, it's going to be important for us to be up to the task because they're, they're bringing it. They're yeah. bringing the heat and they're going to trap us and you got to get layups. Points in the paint yeah, against them absolutely. is gold. The uh, most recent uh, statistics coach that came out this morning, your team in conference play first in scoring defense, 66 points a game. This will be the ultimate test for that defense. Yeah, so you got the, the lowest scoring team giving up the points to the guys that are going <laughs> to score the most. Something's going to give. Yeah, yeah. We hope it's our way. Yeah, no doubt about it. And coach, I ask you this many times. I'm gonna ask it one more time. But from a fan what standpoint, if I don't want to answer it. Well, you'll answer it. I okay. just don't know if it's I'm asking it the right way. But it just seems tempting. Let's say they come out and they hit their first two or three threes, which they're prone to do. To remain disciplined and not to get in a three-point shooting contest with them is almost a mind game. It is. Is it not? Yeah, and then defensively, you got to figure out what you're gonna do, because a lot of times we've had more luck like zoning them than playing man because they're gonna, they're, gonna, they're gonna shoot it up quick. Yeah. And so if you can stay matched up and, and get the defensive rebound, not give them a second shot, that really helps you. But uh, 
you're right. The mindset is a huge element in this game because there's going to be big flow. There, yep. There's been big runs in a lot of our games, but there'll be some runs in this, this game for sure yep. because that's how they play. And he's got multiple players that are shooting threes, more than he's had even at VMI. I mean, they had Peterson, who was amazing uh, at scoring, but he's got a lot of guys that are averaging two to three three-pointers made a game, yep. uh, maybe more than anybody in our league. So yep. that makes them even more dangerous. So you can't key on one or two players. They're all looking for their shot, and they all have made shots this season. Now, the good news, you do have a run of four games at home, but they're bunched a little tight. You've got Saturday, Monday, Thursday, Saturday. So the next four at home, but it's four games in eight days. No, yeah, that's right. And, uh, but, I mean, we're at home. I mean. I mean, at this time of year, you got to play. You got yeah. you got to be ready to play. I think it's been good. We've had a few days after Western Carolina game to get ready for Citadel, uh, and for our guys, we've missed a few days of class already that we normally don't because of the way the schedule fell yeah. at the very beginning of the second semester. So it's important for these guys to have a few days working on the classwork oh, and getting caught up too uh, right here at the beginning as we get into these four games that uh, we sorely need at home. Talk about the switch, uh, Coach, of playing Western so close together last week and now playing them again on Monday, uh, playing somebody so few days apart. Well, Coach, I mean, they're going to be ready for us. Uh, the good thing is they have a game on Saturday, too. Uh, I think they might accidentally play Thursday, if I don't mistake. I think they play Thursday, Saturday, and then play us Monday because us at Citadel, they're the yeah, only ones that's, not, that's not playing. Yeah, on Citadel Thursday has played night. nine thus far. But quick turnaround, the uh, team you just uh, played last weekend. Well, you're not sure what people are going to do to you, but like I mentioned, since they have those many games in a row, they're probably going to stay to who they are right now. There's not a whole lot of time to put new things in or change it up unless yeah. you're doing it before the Thursday game. Uh, so to me, that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be more a little bit like what we've already seen. Yeah. And the familiar part for our players is the scouting and preparation won't be as extensive as normal because we had just played them. Let me ask you one more question about that, Coach. Obviously, your I have to that one too. Your, yes, sir. Okay. Your coaching staff will make adjustments on playing a team the first go round. But do you have to anticipate what the other coaching staff, the adjustments they are making, having played you one game? Yeah, already? they will. Everybody will. Uh, that's why you try to have different endings and uh, have maybe a few different wrinkles that uh, you, they didn't see the first time, which we've already been working on. Hopefully, they'll be good for us as we get into the, the games. And, you know, one possession here and there, one turnover. Uh, that could be the difference of the game as we've already yep, seen absolutely. in 10, 10 ball games of our 21 already this season. All right, a lot of great opportunities for you to make your way to Hawkins Arena the next few days. See the Mercer men and women. We'll be back next week with more Inside Mercer Basketball.